the scope of this sprint. Um, some improvements that were introduced were for the um, collection <laughs> interface. Uh, essentially, what's normally facing the user are um, a listing of uh, containers and, uh, excuse me, components and containers within any given collection. And what one can find given the extensibility of the EAD structure is that these can be quite lengthy. Um, so one um, set of improvements that were identified were to introduce some expand and collapse buttons that would basically uh, collapse these into a more human readable and, and more easily navigable uh, structure. Um, following some wireframes that were provided by Gary, Jennifer, and Camille, um, some of this work has been advanced such that if you, uh, well, firstly, starting at the actual um, at the component level, you'll see that uh, once you go beyond a certain depth in the tree, you can actually render um, uh, basically preceding elements within this tree. And um, this is also an, an improvement that was introduced um, at, the, uh, at the container level as well. Uh, right now, there's still quite a bit of work to do when it comes to restructuring and improving the JavaScript. Uh, functionality. Uh, there's some refactoring to be done, and I'm going to be taking a look at trying to um, address some of that um, as this sprint proceeds. Um, and that's um, that's everything that I have to report for these improvements. And I'm going to go ahead and hand this off to uh, Jack for the uh, search dropdown. Thanks, James. Um, so I'm going to be demoing uh, some enhancements made um, to searching ability uh, in ArcLight. Um, uh, this was uh, implemented by a colleague, Jesse Keck. And so um, what we see here is some new, um, uh, you know, some new things here, uh, kind of in the UI here, this, this uh, like options menu here. Um, and so then ArcLight will kind of work like it's currently been working. Um, but uh, when I'm within a um, item uh, in a collection, this will change so that uh, search is specified to this collection um, instead of all collections. And then so if I search now, um, I'm searching within this collection here. We can see the facet uh, for this collection um, is on. And, um, you know, I could switch this to all collections very easily and just click search, and that would give me a result in all collections. So this is kind of um, this uh, previous ArcLight feature where um, there was kind of a search context box here over on the left-hand side. It's been now pushed up to the top and, you know, hopefully provide uh, users um, uh, new and enhanced abilities to, um, uh, findings within a collection and search within them. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Gary to talk about some view styling updates. Yeah, I'm going to talk about uh, just very briefly um, some of the visual design work uh, we've done in the in the past week. Um, as most of you watching this demo know, um, our focus in the work cycle is really getting the critical functionality um, that we think needs to be in our plate for institutions to uh, be able to adopt it. Um, but at the same time, um, when an institution does adopt um, our plate, we, we know that they're going to want to uh, make updates locally uh, to the visual design to match their institution branding and, um, you know, other applications at the institution. So, um, this week, we've tried to do a few things to start to make it easier for adopters to uh, customize the visual design. So uh, one very simple thing, um, but I think will help people is um, uh, making our color definitions uh, more consistent and a little more generic in the sense of, uh, we've translated a lot of uh, hard-coded color definitions uh, and replace them with bootstrap, uh, the, the basic bootstrap uh, color definitions. Uh, in some cases, these are the same exact color, 
but just by making using the bootstrap uh, definition of the color, uh, I think it will be easier for somebody to come in and, and make customizations and understand what color this is. Um, we've also, along with that, um, uh, we've made sure that we're consistently using the same color for some common elements. Like uh, we use a lot of borders, uh, horizontal. Uh, borders around the site and um, in a few places they were they were defined in a bunch of different places uh, using very specific styling um, that like this with for using CCC and um, other places we're using different colors and so that's all been turned into a variable that we can just apply anywhere uh, we want to use a horizontal uh, border um, we can just use the variable and get the same styling. And that will make it easier for somebody who comes along and wants to uh, change that border color uh, throughout the application. They can just change it in one place and affect all the horizontal borders uh, in ArcLight. Um, another example of work we've done to try to uh, make the visual design more consistent is with the search results. So um, we basically have four sort of different views of search results. We've got this all results uh, view, the sort of default view. Um, we also have a compact view. Um, and you'll see before we made this change, if you, it's kind of subtle, but if you look in the left, the left alignment of the result items, when we go from normal to compact, uh, the, the list jumps to the left. Uh, I've got an extraneous rule up here too. Um, so that's a little uh, less than desirable. And then the group results, we've got this compact view. And when we go to um, uh, the regular view, we have some, some differences in um, the, the alignment and um, how, we, how we show some other things. So uh, one thing we've tried to do this week is make all those consistent. Um, and um, one other thing I didn't really touch on here, but we have this uh, badge we use to show the extent of a collection. Um, and this is defined a couple different ways between the, the result, the all results view and the, the group results view. Um, and so this visual design update was try to, to uh, make that more consistent. So now all the definitions for the base um, styling of that that extent badge is in one place um, so an adopter could come in and if they want to use different border radius and other um, styling elements to that extent badge they can change it in one place and it will affect um, both of those um, uh, instances of the extent badge um, and so here's here's the the result of the those changes now we're in the default view of results and we change the compact and you'll see there's no shift on the left edge anymore. Um, we're just going from the full, the full result um, uh, elements to the compact results. And similarly with, with group now, we go from the regular group oops, to the compact view and things stay very consistent. And the only thing the user sees change is the actual content of the the result items in the view. So th those are very, you know, simple changes and there's a lot more styling uh, we can do. Um, and we may have to continue some of this after the work cycle, but um, that's definitely a, a focus of our work right now. So that's it for visual styling and I will turn it over to the Ann. Um, so today I'm gonna show you the style and layout changes we made to collection context. Um, our goal here was to make the style and layout of the collection context tab have the same look and feel as the new visual updates we made to the search results page. Um, some of the updates we did were to add an icon to um, the left side of the title that represents whether the item is a collection, whether it's a file, or whether it's a level in between. We added the container information to the right of the title row, um, to the right side of the title in the title row. We added the lawn online content indicator icon in green here um, to show if an item has online content. 
and we added the bookmark checkbox and the bookmark icon here um, to on the right far right side of the title row. Uh, we made some adjustments for the small breakpoint and below. So let me pull up the screen with that. Um, so on the small breakpoint and below, um, we've collapsed the container information, the online content icon, and the bookmark over here um, to be the last row on the, it's in the bottom row of the item. And um, we've right aligned the bookmark and the online content item will be right aligned right here. And on the uh, container information is left aligned on that bottom row. And we also did the view more, view less toggle um, on the extent on the scope note. So if you have, uh, once it gets to three lines, uh, deep, you can do the view more and view less toggle, uh, depending on that will adjust to the screen size. And that's uh, what I have to show you on the collection context tab visual updates. Um, now I'm going to turn it over to Gordon. So um, what I'm going to talk about is a ticket uh, called tab presence and contents by component level. So this is a revision to the display uh, of the tabs at uh, different levels uh, in a given collection. So if we look at this collection, for example, at the top level of the collection, uh, previously where it says overview here, uh, it said collection context, and we have a contents tab, an online content and access tab at this level. If we go a little deeper into the collection, so now we're at a series level. Um, the tab that said overview now says, collection content, the contents tab is gone, and we just have the online content and access tabs left. And if we continue to go down, uh, well, this next level, we actually have uh, links to uh, online content directly here. So I guess I can't go down further there. Um, but basically this whole ticket was about updating how the tabs are labeled and displayed at the different levels. Okay, uh, so I just wanna talk about one uh, small revision. We, in the sprint, were able to make what we hope are the final bug fixes that were left to be made for uh, collections where uh, components did not have identifiers. Um, so these are cases where we at indexing time are creating identifiers for these components. Um, we had encountered a, a bug related to expanding and collapsing where um, co a collection like this previously in many cases was doing nothing if you would click on a plus. Um, this one was a bit tricky to track down. Um, the issue ended up being uh, related to a, a limitation in bootstrap uh, which would not let a uh, collapse or expand work if that element, if its ID began uh, with a number. Um, so in this case, uh, we, our hexadecimal uh, number that we're minting for an ID, um, you know, in 10 out of 16 uh, times uh, is gonna begin with a number. Uh, and so those are the cases that we're breaking. Uh, our solution for this was actually to prefix the minted IDs with AL underscore. Uh, this is consistent with um, how archive space uh, assigns IDs. Those are A space underscore prefixed. Um, that has the effect of ensuring that that ID is going to start with a letter and that the collapse and expand uh, will work in all cases. That's all that I wanted to show, and I'm going to uh, kick it back over to Mark to wrap up. Thanks, Sean. Um, I don't have much else. I just want to thank everyone for uh, their feedback and participating in this work cycle. It seems like we've got a lot done. 
Um, we are still evaluating whether we'll do a full demo uh, video and recording. But yeah, thanks to everybody for their involvement and thanks for the feedback. We've done a, we've, we appreciate everything that you've been able to contribute to this work cycle. Thanks.